Let us sing the song Jesus Saves, hymn number 10. Let us give praise to our all-loving and all-powerful Savior. Let us sing the song hymn number 10, Jesus Saves. May peace request Brother Anthony Mensa for our opening prayer. Let's pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Savior, we thank you this morning for granting us life once again. We never thought we'd wake up and come here and glorify your name, but for your love and for your compassion, you have forgiven us today for us to become as a human being again. We thank you and we appreciate whatever you have done in our life. We also pray for whatever is going on, the epidemic disease virus which is going on the world. Father, we pray that you raise up your hand for everything to come down. We believe in you and we have faith in you that in, in your appropriate time, you make everything to cease. We also pray for our church members who are in the house watching us on, online. We pray for them that you should take care of them. Take their steps for them and always encourage them to read their Bible and always encourage them to listen to whatever we are doing here so that the devil will not steal them from your hands. In this, I pray in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning to all of you who are watching out there. Uh, welcome to the Lord's Day. And I hope that the words that we are going to speak to today would bring comfort to our souls because it is the only true source of comfort whenever we are going through the difficult times of our lives. And how many of you are afraid of the dark? Darkness is one of the fears that naturally afflict us. It makes us possible, it, mis it makes us think of the possible dangers or imagine dangers that may look, lurk in the dark. Perhaps many of you have experienced painful accidents caused by unscheduled brownouts, and when, or when somebody just turned off the light switch. It could be embarrassing at times. In the spiritual realm, darkness is used as a metaphor to represent ignorance, sins, God's judgment, and death. Now, these are real spiritual dangers, especially if you do not know the Lord. But to those who are the children of God, we are no longer in the domain of darkness. Instead, we have been transferred from darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. We live now in the realm of light. Light for us means spiritual knowledge received by revelation, God's presence, God's deliverance, and life. The Lord for us is our light and our deliverer. This is now the sphere where we as believers live in. Even though this is true of us, yet when problem comes, such as this that we are now encountering, we tend to forget this truth. 
We let our problems dictate our sense of safety and security and assurance. This is why God has given us a lot of promises from his word that our ultimate safety rests in God. For example, David in his psalm reminds us that because God is our light and our salvation, let us fully trust on him. Shall we open our Bibles to the book of Psalms 32 and we will read the whole psalm. Let me read. The Lord is the light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host uh, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a war should rise up against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his holy temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. And now mine head shall be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacles sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou seek, say, seek my face. Seek ye my face. My, fa my heart said unto thee, thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord shall take up me up. Teach me thy ways, O Lord. Lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver not me over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and they such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask for the blessing of this word. O oh God, I pray that you would use the reading of this word to bring comfort to us and to encourage us. Since we realize, O oh Lord, that you are light, our light, you are our salvation, you are our fortress, you are our stronghold. Help us, O oh God, to face the dangers that we have now with faith and confidence that, and assurance that you are always with us, that you are present and you will hide us in your tabernacle and in your presence, O oh God. And this we ask and pray in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This psalm is sung during the six month in preparation for the uh, through un until the six to until the seventh month in preparation for the Jewish New Year, which is known as the Rosh Hashanah, and until the Yom Kippur. In these days of O and ten holidays from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, they sing this song. Psalm 23 speaks of the permanence and dependability of the believer's relationship with God. Human relationship, as we soon will find out, often fail, even the closest ones. But God will never fail because he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. The psalm is divided into three parts. From verses 1 to 6, this is the affirmation of faith of the psalmist. And from 7 to 12, this is the prayer or supplication in faith. And, and the last was the application of faith. How should we respond to this truth? In the first part, this is what we would read. This is David's statement of faith. The Lord is my light. He made it personal. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So this is the statement of an of a, of a affirmation of faith, and then he would give us this rhetorical question. Because the Lord is our light and our salvation, whom shall I fear? And the obvious answer is none. 
and the Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? We know that David is a, is a great warrior. He was able to defeat his enemies. Yet in all his military exploit, he recognizes that it is God who is our, his strength. David is the light and his salvation, and in this he is afraid. Remember that light speaks of, of truth, of knowledge and wisdom coming from the word of God as he revealed it to him. And uh, this is also speaks of God's deliverance. That's why the word light and salvation are in this passage in one, in one phrase. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And if God is your, if your Savior, He is your light and your salvation. We were, we were in darkness, as the book of Colossians told us. We were in darkness, but God, in His grace, has transferred us from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. We, as believers now, real, live in the realm of light. We are now saved. By the, we have been saved by the work of the Lord Jesus Christ who has redeemed us by his own blood. And not only that, in, the, in verses 3 and 4, he is also our stronghold. He is the strength of our life. The image really speaks of a fortress. When the wicked, um, the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies and my foes came up upon me, uh, to eat up my flesh, they all stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this I will be confident. This is David's experience. There have been many times in David's life wherein enemies almost got him. But God delivered him. He was there at the palace of King Saul. And little did he know that King Saul had nursed an anger against him in fits of jealousy. He threw a spear, a spear against him, which he was able to evade many times. There were times that he was almost captured, and then one of, his, one of the soldiers of Saul told him, Oh, there's an enemy coming in our place. So they left David and rushed to, uh, and rushed to meet the Philistines. God is our stronghold. As he had been a stronghold for David, he is also our stronghold because we are now his children. And what else? David also affirmed that God is his greatest desire. Verse 4, One thing I have desired of the Lord and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple. Many of you perhaps have been longing, oh, that this quarantine would be over. Oh, that this quarantine should never be extended beyond April 14 or April 15. Because we would all want to meet together with this congregation, but situation had forbidden us to meet together with each other for our own good. And then, I know that so many of you, it is your greatest desire to come and to learn from the truth coming from God's word. But anyway, even in this simple live stream, may you seek time to make your Lord your greatest desire. What does this mean to us, for us? Because for David, he say, this is the only thing, this is my singular desire in my life, the one thing that is most important to me, that I would, that I would, that really seek after my personal preoccupation that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple. He is captivated with the character, with the perfection, with the attributes of God, that it is his desire to learn more about him because such knowledge is transforming his own life. Derek Kidner, said along this line he said we should note the singleness of purpose one thing as the best answer to distracting fears 
the priorities within that purpose to be held, to behold, and to inquire, a preoccupation with God's person and His will, the essence of worship, and indeed of, indeed of discipleship. He realized that his singular purpose of knowing God is the only antidote to the fear that he has all around him. The same also with us. When we begin to realize that God is the, our only safety, that the character of God is our only anchor of our faith, then all of these fears seem, seem to may, may, seems to melt away. You remember the song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. All the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It is even our cure for materialism and all of other distractions that make us turn away from our Savior. What else? The image three changes from Lord being our shelter into the Lord being our host. Verse five, verses 5 and 6. For in the time of trouble he shall be he shall hide me in the pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me, and he shall set me upon the rock. And now mine high mine head shall be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me, and I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto unto him. And this is what he said Because the Lord is my shelter, I know that he will also be my host. He shall hide me. When the Bible says he shall hide me, it means that I am secure. Now, as, even as we are studying in the book of Colossians, we are told in the book of Colossians that, when, uh, that Christ, that our life is hidden with Christ in God. That means that we are secure. There is nothing that will ever take us away from him. Now this Lord, this imagery guarantees that with the Lord being our host, that no harm would, uh, that no spiritual harm will even come to us. Even should death come to us. The Bible says that we are now safe in Christ. That even death will never be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So after making this affirmation of faith, he prayed now his prayer. This is now his supplication in faith. And this should also be our prayer. This is a prayer that we must also echo. Now, verse 7. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. Now, let's pray. And realize that God is hearing us. Even though he knows that God hears him. Yet we should always seek his face by praying, Lord, hear me now. Because our prayer is an admission of our own insufficiency and our total dependence on God. Whenever we pray, we are saying to ourselves that we cannot handle this on our own. Our, our strength will not be able to sustain us through the battles that we are, are facing. That is what David uh, echo in his prayer. Alistair Begg once said, Prayer is an acknowledgement that our need of God's help is not partial but total. We need God's help, not only in a certain aspect of our life but also totally. And his second, and second aspect of his supplication is this Do not reject me. 8 and 9. When thou said, Seek my face, my heart shall say unto thee, Thy face will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not away thy, er, thy servant in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. There is an idea here that David in his thinking felt that God has left him in his condition. That's why he said, Hear me. Hide not your face from me. When he, when he said, Seek my face, it is as if that he had that God has put a distance uh, between him and God. But that's not really the case. God did not forsake him. It is only David's perception. So this prompted him to seek God's presence even more. Instead of being angry at God, his desire is this, to get close to God. 
because he realized that he is his only light. David expresses faith by using the past also as a basis for asking God's help in the future. He's asking him for future rescue for the condition that we, he is in. He said, Lord, thou hast been my help in the past. Help me now. I am trusting you, O Lord, that based on, the, on your record of helping me, you will help me again and again and again. And that is also should be our, our desire and our, act, our response that we will always recognize God's help in the past as our basis for asking God's help in the future. God has been trustworthy with us and he will never fail us. What else? Verse 11, teach me thy ways, O Lord. Lead me the plain path because of mine enemies. He said, Lord, teach me thy path. David is willing to be taught by the Lord. Now this is a prayer of a true disciple of Christ. Teach me. Remember this. Whenever you come to the point that you think that nobody can teach you, that is the time that you start sliding down, backsliding. Because we need to learn. God will use other people to teach you, to show you your errors, to show you where you need to grow. And this is the reason why we should always be humble enough to be taught. But when we begin thinking, no, I will not let others teach me, I should teach others, then that's pride and that is the beginning of your downfall. He said, Lord, teach me. Lead me in the plain path. He did not say, Lord, lead me in the easy path. He said, lead me in the level path wherein I would be able to discern the true intents of my enemies. Because he began to realize that he had enemies, even his own household, part of his own household had been his enemies. Even members of his cabinet had been his enemies. He said, Lord, lead me in the plain path. And also, he said, do not give me over to the will of my enemies. That is also David experience. Ten tribes were against him, and he has only two of the tribes. And his best counselor, Ahetopel, have counseled a very good military tactic on how to capture David. But God was with him. God worked it out so that instead of Absalom, his own children, who, child who rose as up against me, follow a very sound military strategy, follow a very unsound military advice which causes downfall. But it is because God has worked it through. And his affirmation of faith is this, that even when my mother and my father forsake me, then all the Lord will take me up. You know what? Mothers and fathers, our parents are known for giving what the children need. Very, very, uh, in most cases, parents will give up everything that they have for the sake of their children. But we know on very rare cases, there are instances that even parents would for, forget their own children. He said, should my parents forgive me, forget me, and my close relatives and even my friends would give up on me, the Lord will never do that. He said, Lord, you are my, you are my only hope. I am not placing my hope on human relationship. I am not placing my hope on even on my on my company, I am placing my full trust on you, that you are going to deliver me. And then, how do you apply to these truths? Verse 13, he said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, wait. Now, how do we respond to the truth? He said, the first thing that we must remember, remember that God is good. That is his reason why he did not faint. He said, I had fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God by his character is good. His ways are good. 
You have to remember that not only that God is good, but the way that He's dealing is good. And He can make all things to work together for good for us so that it will be able to accomplish, accomplish the purpose that He has for our life. This is our confidence that, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His children. This is a promise, if the Lord is your light and your salvation. That's why this is also an invitation for you to trust the Lord as your personal Savior, because you cannot find refuge in anybody else, in anything else, except on the Lord. Because the Lord Himself has sent the only salvation He has for us. This is when He sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a payment for our sins. You and I have sinned against God, and you and I are in great danger of suffering for our sins forever and ever in hell. But God in His mercy sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the God-man who bore our sins on Calvary. He bore the wrath of our sins, paid it in full, he willingly did it. He shed his blood to wash away our sin. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, and if you will believe on him, he will save you. He will take away your sins. He will be your salvation. And from that point on, he is your light. You are no longer in the realm of darkness, but you are now living in the sphere of light. And you could say to yourself, the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I be afraid? He will be, all, you will also realize that God is good to you. What else? We must wait on the Lord. Verse, verse 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord, wait. Know what does waiting means? The idea of waiting on the Lord is not to... To so idly wait until God do something. It's not the idea of waiting. It means that as we seek Him, as we work, we rely on His strength and not on our own. This is not an excuse for being idle, but this is an excuse for relying on the power of God as we rely on Him to strengthen us through the journey that we are facing, through the dangers that we are going through, even in this in this. And this, even in this pandemic that is now uh, endangering us. Now let me take you down to the memory lane in our history. On June 20, 1944, during the Battle of the Philippine Sea, the American Air Forces have scored a great victory there in the Battle of the Marianas and have crippled badly the Jap Japanese Imperial Navy. As the American pilots have completed their mission and they were coming back uh, to the Philippine Sea to meet up with their troops, they had soon found out that it was very dark. And they know that they would be coming on a, on a time such as this, that it would be very dark. Now the aircraft carrier cannot turn on the light because they would be exposed to the to the enemy submarines and other aircraft carriers. So, uh, the pilots now are in danger and they are afraid. Some of them were sobbing that they could be heard over the radio. So, the, the admiral of the fleet and his captain decided on this matter. They counted the risk. Of the situation, he knew that uh, the Admiral Mark Mistner and his able Chief of Staff Captain Albert knew the risk involved and are willing to take them. Realizing that they would be exposed to the enemy, to the enemy that they would know with this position, in spite of that, they gave the command: "Let there be light." And suddenly, all the lights of the fleet, especially the aircraft carriers were turned on. Thus, the lives of the pilots were saved, and the whole fleet rejoiced at such risky but a very important life-saving decision. In an infinitely greater way, 
The Lord is our life, and because of this, we are saved to the fullest. May the Lord be your light and your salvation today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, at your presence we confess that you are our light and our salvation, and you are also our fortress. Help us, O oh God, to trust in thee. Help us, O oh Lord, to make us our greatest desire. Help us, O oh Lord, that we would remember that uh, you are our shelter so that we would rely on thee. And for this, we would always remember that you are good and that help us, O oh Lord, learn to wait on you. As we do our part as in the things that you would want us to do, as you would help us minister in, through this pandemic, help us, O oh Lord, to make our ministry fruitful, that we would that people would be encouraged even by the uh, by these uh, live streams and other ministries that we do. Lord, open up, up opportunities for our frontliners who are Christians who are sharing the gospel to their fellow workers. Oh Lord, you, we pray that you would bless their effort in the name of the Lord of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.